Do you know where your trash goes on trash day? Most people don't. Why? Because once it's out of sight, it's out of mind. Did you know the average American wastes 4.6 pounds of trash every day? Just imagine how much that would equate to in a year. According to the 2009 census, that calculates to be over 515 billion pounds a year. Worst part is, most of this waste can be recycled. And if it's not recycled, it can harm the wildlife, our water supply, and other natural resources. The United States may pride itself on being eco-friendly, but we're only 39th in 149 countries. The top 14 countries are European nations that have higher regulations on waste. Today I'd like to discuss, one, how we manage trash, two, how beneficial recycling can be to our environment, and three, how you can recycle at home. So where does our waste go? Well, most of it goes into landfills, which are large depressions that are engineered and designed to keep our waste out of our water supply. The problem is when the water and waste come in contact, they produce a chemical known as leachate, which can be toxic and harm our environment, according to ZeroWasteAmerica.org. There are four elements you need for a secure landfill. The first is a protective bottom layer. This is often made of hard plastic, only a tenth of an inch thick, or clay. The second you need is a leachate collection system to keep that toxic chemical out of the environment. The third you need is a cover to go over the top of the landfill to keep excess water from entering with the waste. And the last item you need is a natural hydrogeologic setting, which means a hard bedrock for the landfill to sit on. There are lots of problems associated with landfills. The covers can fail because of erosion or sunlight. The plastic linings can be easily degraded by common household items such as margarine or vinegar. And the clay layers can allow benzene to diffuse straight through as well as other chemicals. The leachate collection systems also fail due to clogs by silt or even because they're eroded from chemicals. Statistically, all landfills will at some point leak, and most of them, new and old, are being put near large bodies of water. In 2000, Leak Location Services Incorporated conducted a survey on landfills, and 82% of them had leaks. 41% of those leaks were larger than a square foot. Imagine how large those are now. All the trash that we produce has to be taken to a landfill. That means that it's truck, bars, or even put on trains. This causes higher carbon dioxide emissions, more money, and more energy to just to dispose of our trash. So there's got to be a better way, right? Well, you may be wondering, what are the benefits of recycling? According to the EPA.gov, recycling can expand manufacturing jobs and increase competition for the United States, which means that it decreases the need that we rely on incineration or even landfills. If we use recycled materials, we decrease the amount of energy it takes to produce goods by two-thirds. This decreases the emissions of greenhouse gases we emit into the atmosphere. And we, overall, recycling will conserve our natural resources in the hopes that it will be there for future generations. Now you may be wondering how this benefits me or you. According to planetgreen.discovery.com, if you recycle one aluminum can, you save the amount of energy to run a 100 watt light bulb for four hours or your TV for three. But if you threw that can away, well then you're pouring out the equivalent of half its volume in gas. If you recycle just one pound of waste in a year, just one pound of waste according to discovery.com saves 2.5 pounds of carbon dioxide emissions. That's equivalent to taking 39 cars off the road every year. This in turn saves our ozone layer. There are some negative effects though. <clears throat> some of the patching 
packaging plastics we use today are made from byproducts from petroleum, which is a non-renewable source. And some items, such as plastics one and two, are labeled that they can be recycled, but they cannot, which can cause problems in the recycling process. All the negative effects of recycling deal more with misconceptions about how to recycle and do not directly affect or harm the environment. So you may be wondering what are the steps of recycling? Well, first is there's collection and processing. How your recycled goods get to the factory. Second is manufacturing, which is how those items are then cleaned, sorted, and then produced into completely or partially recycled goods. The last and most important step is the buying and purchasing of recycled products. If you don't do this, then it doesn't matter how much you recycle if you're not using the products you're making from it. You may be wondering what you can recycle. In this day and age, you can recycle just about anything. Mattresses, bicycles, paints, computers, TVs, batteries. If you're wondering where to go in your area to recycle, go to www.earth911.com. In conclusion, the details of how harmful landfills can be to our environment are a little fuzzy to most people. Recycling can decrease the energy, cost, and protect our environment, unlike landfills. There may be some negative effects to recycling, but most of them are dealing with just the improper sorting of recycled goods. So the next time you throw away a battery or use a paper towel, think of how fast your landfill's leaking. Do you want to be responsible for that? No. So next time you're drinking a soda, Remember to recycle and you can save that energy and gas. Thank you.